Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be looking at part two called The Setup <laughs> of the two-part series of the SRG's review of the new TR8 cockpit from the guys at Track Racer. Now make sure you check out part one called The Build of this review for all the details of the TR8's materials and build quality. So, let's get to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the seat mounted. And as you can see, the bolts are actually in the seat already. And this is the way it comes in your kit, which is kind of neat. And again, if you saw the build video, then you know that's how all these parts come. They already have the hardware installed where you're supposed to be installing it, which again, I really like because you don't have to guess on which screw goes where. It's pretty much there for you all the time. Now these are actually pretty loose. I won't need to use my <laughs> my wrench here, my loud wrench to get these out. And these are M8s and these are kind of neat because they actually have a knurled edge on these bolts. And they are M6, kind of a socket cap bolt, but kind of a modification on that. And I'll show you a little close up of that. There you go. So you can see little knurled bits on this. So you can actually use your hands to do this. Now, I kind of think that they want you to do that. Let's go ahead and get the ones on this side out. I think they want you to use your hands and not tighten it too much as far as these seat bolts because this is a fiberglass seat and it's not the same kind of fiberglass seat that you have in a real racing seat. So in other words, it's not as thick and not as stiff. So you want to be careful here on how you mount this. You don't want to tighten it too tight. You could probably rip the threads that are inserted in the side of the seat clean out if you do it. In fact, I'm going to just put this wrench off to the side so I won't be tempted to use it. <laughs> so really, it's pretty simple here, as you might imagine, to get the seat mounted. Just set it in here gently. I'm going to try my best not to scratch anything and kind of just look on both sides as it's going down and let it rest on the bottom. Now, I usually like my seat canted back as far as the angle. And I think on my other rig, I'm like 40 degrees or so. So I'm going to go with the top slot for the angle. Kind of let it come back here a little bit. And this is where that, I think, that rubber that we saw in the build video that these side brackets are fitting on comes into play because they'll They'll move around a little bit and actually help get this thing lined up. Let's see. Now for the back one, I want that in the lowest hole. I think I'm going to go with the back first. Let's see. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this one started first. And it's kind of a little dance you do here to hold the seat steady while you're trying to get your bolt started. And there we go. Well, that wasn't hard, was it? So that's the bottom back one. I'm going to go ahead on the other side and do the side and do that side too because you kind of want these things even when you're going to make your adjustment on the or put the top bolts in and that you get a better idea of where it needs to line up. All right, so we're just going to put these in loosely for now. Got them both in. As you can see it's going back and forth, which is what we want. And then of course, we'll just push this side down far enough to go in the first hole here, or slot. This is actually a slot. And kind of jiggle it around a little to get it started. Again, you don't want to force any of this stuff. If you can't get it started with your fingers, something is not right. And there we go. I'll go ahead and run this one in. And it looks like Okay, that one's coming up tight. This one up here, it feels like it's just stopping. Now we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. It's not going all the way in to the hole like the back ones are. And on this side, I have some fabric that's actually hanging down. But I'm just going to kind of pull the seat fabric up a bit. I should be able to get this in and started. Yeah, easy enough. Yeah, and this one's going all the way in. Over here, and over here, I can actually get it to go all the way in with my fingers. Right. So, 
This one over here, though, is kind of bottoming out. So this is where I'll take my wrench. Now I'm tempted to use it again. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's on tighten. And I am going to hand do this. I'm not going to take the wrench and tighten it up. I'm just going to, there we go. Because sometimes, yeah, it's going on in. So I'm going to go ahead and run it just a little bit there. There we go. Don't want to get it too tight. Right. So I'm going to jiggle the seat a little bit like this, holding the back of it as I'm tightening these bolts and see if that will get it far enough. But it doesn't, doesn't seem like it is because it's not real tight. So we're going to have to use the ratchet to snug these up, I think. But I'm going to be very careful here because I don't want to tighten it so much that I pull that threaded insert out of here. That would be a disaster. <laughs> you don't want to do that. And I'll go ahead and turn this one a little bit too. Again, very carefully. I'm just actually using the weight of this ratchet. It's got a little battery in it to kind of... And I'm also listening. I want to listen to make sure that there's no cracking noises, which would indicate the threaded insert is trying to release itself and come out, which again would not be good. All right, that's actually that's pretty tight. We'll go over here to this side and do the same thing. Again, just kind of using the weight of the ratchet. Gently do this. As you can tell, I am the last thing I want to do while I'm doing shooting this video, obviously, is get this so tight that it pulls the threads out. Even though I'd like to show you guys why you don't want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Nice and solid. So, one thing to do now is just sit in it and see how it feels at that angle. I'm going to have to take my little remote wire this out and set it aside because my back won't fit right. All right. You know, just from sitting in it, it feels pretty good. It's, yeah. It doesn't feel like it's, it's got a lot of flex. It's, it's, it's strong as far as pushing back. I'm going to put my feet up here on the front bar and push back on it. And that feels pretty good. And let's check the operation of the slider. Okay. That works pretty good. Now this looks where I'm probably going to have my wheel and my pedals. I do like that it's low. A lot of cockpits that are prefab, you're, you're sitting up so much higher than the pedal plate is. And yeah, I could see wanting to go lower here though for my seating position. And the only way to do that would be to drill some new holes in this plate, these brackets here, or buy some second hand or, or some aftermarket brackets that have more holes that actually go lower. And there's a lot of those around that you can find, the side mount brackets for these kind of seats. So it wouldn't be that difficult. Right. So yeah, this is actually feeling pretty good here. The steering wheel, once the motor's up here, I think that's going to be about right. The shifter seems a bit far away. But then the, I forget, this is the shifter plate here. And, and we'll look at that when we're actually setting it up. It actually comes back. The whole plate is kind of back from this. So yeah, maybe that will be okay. Right. So I'm all the way up. I think I'm all the way up on the slider here. Yep, I'm hitting the bump. Let's see what goes. how far back it goes. Oh, it goes way back. <laughs> it goes way back. So, yeah, with the adjustments on the pedals plate and, yeah, the adjustment on the seat, I can see where a very tall person can get in here and use this. In fact, yeah, it's, it's the shorter people that are going to be thinking about, yeah, if they can get to everything okay. But I, I think for me at 5'7", five, 5'8", five, I'm somewhere in there. Yeah, this, this will be fine. So what we'll do next is take a look at this pedal tray and see what pedals will fit on here as far as the slots that they have pre-cut in it. And then we'll make a determination on what kind of pedals I'm going to use. Right, so we have the pedals mounted. And as you can see, I'm using a set of the very nice HPP pedals. And... First off, before I mounted these, I wanted to make sure that the usual suspects fit as far as what most sim razors are using. And yeah, we mounted the Logitech 29. No problems there. The holes lined up. Yeah, very, very nice the way they did the plate here because, you know, not only the G29s, but then I put a 
set of the Thrustmaster T3PA pedals on. And as you can see, they fit just fine too. So yeah, kudos for being able to fit those two. Then I went over and grabbed the Fanatic Club Sport V3s that I have. And sure enough, all four of the holes on that frame lined up perfectly. So yeah, there's three pedal sets right there that'll fit no issues at all. And of course, I ended up with my HPPs because I want to put some heavy duty stuff on this frame just to see how it does because it's such a, a nice stiff frame so far that I just want to push it to its limits and also want to test the pedal tray to its limits. Anyway, I'm actually going to come in a little bit closer here and show you guys how this went on. Now the HPPs I have mounted, you may have seen some of my other videos, I use aluminum profile here to mount the HPP pedals to whatever I'm going to mount it to. As you can see, it's just a uh, four bars here, crossing bars, and some brackets obviously holding it up, and the brackets in the very front there are just supporting the heel plate. Right, so once I had this mounted, and I'm using double brackets here for the corner brackets and with only one screw in it, I, I needed singles, but I ran out of singles, so that's the only reason I'm using these double brackets here. Okay? I really don't need them. It, you know, this, once you clamp this down, it's not going anywhere. Right, so if you look up here, there's a speaker. <laughs> and I just wanna talk about this briefly because of the clearance. There is clearance here between the pedals. And here's the angle, let me get close here, of the pedals. So they're pretty much straight up and down, or very close to it. And the speaker actually, with your feet on the pedals, you never hit the speaker. So it's kinda of like in a neutral spot of driving. And I was a little bit concerned about that when I put these pedals on here. but. There's two ways, I'm gonna go around the back here and show you guys. You see there's where the bracket is. And if we go down low, you can see there's the three bolts on the flange here that we used to clamp that wheelbase bracket on with. So you can mount it here and hang it down there, or you can mount it on the three bolts on the top of that bracket clamp, right? But if you do that, and I'm gonna be running an OSW small midge, semi-cube one, it would actually hit the back of the motor so that wasn't going to work and i do these things just to show you guys what it, it looks like and what you know the options are as far as when it comes to these kind of things so when i'm in the rig and i'll show you that in a minute it doesn't interfere with my pedals as far as using them and i'm also going to show you guys that once i got in here let me go around the side here so you can see the other side I did the two brackets over here also, as you can see, right? And the clearance on the underneath here, you can see on the bar, is getting pretty tight with these pedals. But they do kind of sit straight up. So I kind of expected that. Still plenty of room though, so it's not really gonna interfere. So what we'll do now is go over and I'll show you the foot shot here of me using the pedals. All right, sitting in the seat. And actually, I got a good position here. I really like this position. It's not quite as low as I would like it as far as the seat. I like my the bottom of the seat to be lower. But again, as I discussed before when we were talking about the seat, you could actually get some different brackets and it would make it lower and get it closer to having your bum level with the heel plate here, which is the optimal driving position, I think, for, for most racing duties if you will right so here we are with the pedal set everything and this is what i'm talking about my foot if i'm used to doing left foot braking i really got to come way back here to hit this speaker with my foot and when i'm driving I'm, I'm not doing that your feet are always resting on the pedal somewhere right or a dead pedal if you have one of those sitting over on the left side here so yeah not going to interfere with the actual driving which surprised me I, I, when i put that on there the speaker i said man this is not going to work but yeah it works pretty good now another thing that you can probably see here, and we'll see some more of it when I'm driving, is there is some flex in this pedal tray. You see that when I'm on the brake hard? Yeah, it's flexing. And the reason for that is because of this system we have here, right? The bracket, if it extended further back to do the adjustments, which would require, of course, a much longer or rather taller bracket to be able to accommodate the full range, because down here, you don't have to move it as much because that's the end it's going to be moving the most when you move it. So that's, if they had it further back, I think it would support it a lot better. 
or if they had some kind of a mechanism to support the back of this off the front of that tube that goes around the front. That's what I was thinking. Because obviously when you start raising the pedal set, and you could, I could make this flat and it would, it would you know, take that flex out. But like I said, here at the RSRG, we're here to show you all kinds of different options. And yeah, it's, it is moving. Now, when I'm actually driving the car, it's gonna add some, a little bit of mush to the brake pedal when I do that. And not so much the accelerator pedal. But yeah, it, and I kind of anticipated that when I saw that, when I was actually hooking everything up. I said, you know, I'm gonna be putting pressure on this and there's nothing in the back here to support it. I would like to see some kind of a mechanism in here or something that you could attach to the bar maybe that had a long piece on it that had a slot or a, a long slot in it with these pieces like this drilled holes that match the angles here and you could actually bolt it to this right here and that would take care of it. It wouldn't be any issue at all. In fact, if this was my rig, I would probably, you know, I was going to use this all the time. I would probably figure something out where I would mount something to support the back of this so eliminate that flex. But there is flex, and yeah, just want to show you guys that before we're actually in and driving. So, the pedals are, are set up. They're working great. Got a little flex, but that's okay. You know, I really wasn't expecting it to be solid. The, the frame itself is solid as a rock, but then again, when we start getting to this kind of stuff in the wheelbase up here, we're going to be maybe seeing some movement, I think. But maybe not so much in the wheelbase, but we'll figure that out. But what we'll do next is actually mount the wheelbase. We're going to put a small midge on this baby because, I want again, I want to test the max that it can take because this is a very stiff frame. And I just want to see how it reacts to have a, a high torque direct drive motor on it. And, yeah, when we get back, we're going to have that mounted up and take a look at how that went. So... We got the OSW MIDG 20 motor successfully mounted to this wheelbase mount. And I have to say this wheelbase mount is a very solid piece. Once you get every bolt tightened down very tight, it really does a good job. And we'll actually go ahead and fly up in here and show you guys a little bit closer view of how this went. And yeah, just barely fit. <laughs> If you look down here, you can see the the holes that we're using. In fact, you might be able to see a little better underneath. Eh, it's kind of dark, though. But it barely made it. You see how much of that bracket is hanging off the front? Come back up here and take a look at it. Yeah, I'm all the way at the back here on the front of that bracket. And another thing to consider here... I also have the bracket, the stainless steel OSW bracket that fits the midges and actually fits the semi-cube too also, supposed to anyway. And I'm going to show you that one. It would not fit. Let's see if I can show you guys this so it makes sense. There it is. So if you see this one, actually, you see... If I was on the back bolt there, I'd be at the very limit of that back slot. And then the front slot, obviously, is hanging all the way off <laughs> the mount itself, so that wouldn't work. And if I went the other way, I have the same issue. See, it's coming off the back there, so that's not going to work. So the stainless one doesn't work, but yeah, this it's more of a generic type one for the midge motors that does work. So go figure. I don't know. So anyway, let's go ahead and put that back down there, and we'll... Walk around here and look at the other side. Now, you do have to get all the bolts tightened down here. And, yeah, everything just barely fit on there. And remember, this is a 25 and a half or so pound motor, which is about, what, 11, 11 6 kilo? So, yeah, this wheelbase is being put to the test for sure. Now, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and walk over here and sit down. And maybe put a little pressure on it. Get my bracket out of the way. Let's see. And it's in a pretty good position. Feels pretty good. All right. Feet in the right position. And I'm going to have, obviously, a, a quick release here for the wheel that I put on it. So it's probably going to be more like out here, which should put me just about where I need to be. Now, there is a little bit, as you can see here, I've got a little bit of, if I'm pushing and pulling on it, of movement. Now, I don't know how much that's going to matter 
once I'm actually driving and how much I'm going to feel it. But of course, having almost a 26 pound motor sitting out on the very end, it, it creates a very big lever for the joint down there. But if you'll notice, this, this, piece, this whole piece here is moving, and I got it really tight down there on those bolts. It moves a little bit, but the wheelbase itself is not moving. Yeah, that is a testament to the design of this wheelbase. You see all the bolts all over it, so they really did a good job on this wheelbase. And I'm not sure how you would get rid of that because we're so far out in front with such a heavy piece here. I got a feeling if I had a Thrustmaster on here or like a, a Fanatic or something like that, we wouldn't see as much movement because we got so much weight up here. But again, I wanted to test this thing and put it to the extremes <laughs> and see how it responded. So anyway, the wheel is mounted. So that's good news. And I mean, the wheel base and the motor is mounted, not the wheel. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy actually the way this turned out. I, I was actually expecting more movement than this because again, we have such a long reach coming out here, which creates a lever that you can put pressure on these joints down here. I don't think it's, it's not moving in here, anywhere in here, it's just down there in that joint. So yeah. So what we'll do next, yeah, is just go ahead and get to the shifter assembly and see how that's gonna work out. All right, we've got the shifter plate mounted to the shifter arm that I actually mounted this in the build video because you have to do that to be able to connect this because you're using the existing bolts that are connecting the two pieces of the frame together. And if you saw the build video, you already know that. Right, so what kind of shifter handbrake can you mount on here? I've got several to demonstrate, or actually not demonstrate, but see if they fit. Now, let's go with the ones that are having problems first. That would be the ProSim. <laughs> this is the ProSim Lite from Quaif. And yeah, there's just no holes here. Well, there's a couple of holes that will line up on parts of this shifter, but not really anywhere where, you know, we would definitely be drilling some holes in this if you wanted to mount a shifter like this. But this is a very big shifter. As far as the flange goes, this thing is over seven, it's about seven and a half an inches long, right? So yeah, that's, that's a lot of length and it is a big shifter, 190 mils. So yeah, it just doesn't have anything really lining up anywhere that I could see. And I did move this around quite a bit trying to find something, but yeah, it's easy enough though. Again, in the in solution on a custom build is always going to be obviously drilling your own holes. Right. So we can't use that one. Now, Next one I'm going to take a look at is the Husingveld, right? The sequential shifter, very little guy. See how small that is? <laughs> and actually there's a plate that is included with this that you normally mount this with, right? You can either mount it like this using these two holes down here on a piece of profile or whatever you want to mount it to, or you can flip it around and mount it this way and mount it forward onto a piece of profile or a piece of wood or wherever you're going to mount it to. But there's also a couple of small holes here, three millimeter, right? And they're very small and I, I'm, I'm hesitant to say to mount it with this because I don't think it was ever intended to use those as mounts. But it is a way that you could mount this because there is a place where these line up. These holes are, we can actually find out pretty quickly just by getting down here and looking at this. This is 73, oh, 73, 43 millimeter centers on these holes, right? So all we got to do is find a 43 millimeter centers in a stagger pattern though. It can't be just straight, obviously with this being a stagger pattern like that. And I went around, I was looking for 47 millimeter staggered somewhere that I can mount the shifter. And of course you can flip this plate. You can flip it around so that this part is over here so you can get something further back and closer to you. It's actually a pretty good design, I think. It's very sturdy, by the way. I've, I've mounted this thing. and It's got very minimal amount of movement in it. I really like this. Typically, you don't find this in a prefab type of cockpit that you buy. Typically, the, that's where it's going to be one of the weak points, weak points, rather, or not as stiff as it should be, or you would like it to be in the shifter plates. But anyway, I'm, I was looking down here. 40, there's actually nowhere I could find to make this mount. So 
And that's what, you, you know, you just kind of take your ruler and move it around a little bit. But then I found a pattern that actually looked like it would work. And that's just 43 millimeters between these two guys here. But the problem is it's in the wrong spot and it, the shifter won't mount correctly. So you'd have to do something custom for the Hussein belt if that's what you have. Right. So that's two down. <laughs> now, obviously, this is probably drilled for the usual suspects. And the TH-8A being one of those, obviously, we take the table clamp off or desk clamp. And we've got four holes here, M6 bolts, that we can actually mount this. Or the M5. Anyway, there's a four hole pattern here for that, right? So that would mount right there, just like that. Nice and solid mount for the TH8A. So we got a good place for that. And something else I want to show you on this the stock shifter arm that comes with this. All right, there's the stock one that we're not using. And it connects to the side down here with using some brackets that you saw in the build video if you watched that. But if you look at the top here, it has the exact same pattern right here as it is drilled right here, right? So you could use a TH-8 on this, and you also have these two bigger holes here, which will fit the actual Logitech G29 shifter, which is the next one I was going to show. It has a couple of screw holes there. You can see one there and one there, right? And they are, let's see, what were those? Can't remember all these. <laughs> that's about 85. No, not 85. That was like 83. So that's 83 millimeter on the centers on this thing. But if we go up here and, and measure these two holes right here, you can see right away, at least I can, you guys aren't going to be able to see it. It's 83 millimeter center to center here. So these were intended for the Logitech. And if you kind of slide this over here and, and look where the holes are, you can see that it fits in there just about like that. So a very nice fit, actually. For the Logitech, but I'm not going to use the Logitech. So I got two that that fit that I that I'm not going to use. What's wrong with me? <laughs> well, actually, what I want to use is these shifters and handbrake. Now, this is the handbrake. This is a logs. You guys might have seen the review I actually did on this. Very nice handbrake system. I really like this. The problem is, again, there's there's bolts. We need a pattern. If you look at the pattern here, let me show you on this camera. Right in here, this is actually, the centers on this were 47, right? So 47 centers right here. Well, guess what? We can actually find the 47 centers. We'll go to the other camera. Move this back around. And I have that right here. Not only that, but I have the staggered pattern that I'm going to need to fit the bottom of this shifter, right? Okay, so that one's going to fit. Nice. Actually, it goes this way. Or it goes out in front. So I can actually bolt this one down. Unfortunately, the shifter, the analog shifter, has the same pattern. And there is no pattern here for this to work. You can see it actually has... Let's go down here to this camera. You can see it better. Same staggered pattern there, right? So... The cool thing is, though, they come with this really nice, thick, stainless steel table mount type clamp. And that's what we're going to use on this side. So we'll just clamp this on here with our table clamp, and we'll end up with a staggered shifter and handbrake. Now, it's not as close as I would like it to be bolted down, and I may change my mind. I may actually put the clamp on this one and just kind of do it like this, right? So that they're closer together when I'm using it because yeah, it's better to have it closer together. It's nice to have it bolted down, but like I said, I might change my mind twice by the time I get this done. You'll see the final solution once I'm done though. But yeah, because they have such a good clamp on these, uh, available for these, it, actually that's the way they come, then yeah, there's, I have no hesitation using it because it's a very good clamp system. It's very tight and it'll do the job quite well. The only thing is on the clamps here, the spacing here on this clamp, if you go to all the way up, it won't hit the bottom of the shifter. See that? We got space there. But we can just put a nice wood block in there to shim it up temporarily because I won't be using this forever, obviously, so it'll get the job done. Right. So what we're going to do is go ahead and mount these up. And I'm going to try it with the screws, but I got a feeling over here it's just going to be too far apart. So, yeah, I think I'm going to end up clamping this one also 
and just get them closer together so it's not such a, a reach for me to get to them. So when we come back, we'll see what it looks like once we have the final configuration done. Right, so now we have the shifter and the handbrake attached. And as you can see, I have them next to each other, so that means that I <laughs> went with the clamps on the bottom here, which actually do a very good job, like I said before. These clamps from, yeah, the way they make these things, it's all big, thick stainless steel plate. And yeah, these things really do a good job. So yeah, now we have the sequential shifter and we've got the handbrake, just reach over and grab that. Yeah, I forgot how good these are. I really like the feel of these shifters, of this shifter rather, and the handbrake. It just all kind of goes together. Yeah, so it, you guys that, that actually bought these know what I'm talking about. This really is a fine set to have in your inventory. Right, so looks good here. It's not a whole lot of movement. Uh, let's see if we go with the side camera here. There is a little bit of flex here, but not a whole lot. And it's, the, the pipe going down here is very tight, so that looks good. Just, it's one of those things where you, you know, you're never going to get it completely solid. In fact, it's not 100% solid on my P1. It's not like a rock or anything. It's, it's pretty, it's stiffer than this, but still, it's just not quite solid 100%. But yeah, I think this is something that most, most would have no problem with, especially having these kind of shift, uh, shifter like this and a handbrake you know, heavy like this mounted to the top of it. Yeah, so I think that's going to work. So what we'll do next is, let's see, I think we're going to actually get to the speaker mounts and we're going to see how those go on. So now we have the speaker brackets mounted and you can see how they go on here. I'll give you a back shot of it there. I don't have the screws in these speakers because I'm not going to be using them, but I did want to mock it up so you guys could see how this goes on. So yeah, just hitting those two screws that were already in the side of the rig and then mounting our bracket. Pretty simple, really. And you can see I've got the ones on the front here, and they are actually using those collars that we saw in the build video. And they're working pretty good. Actually, I, I like the way they're pointing. They're pointing in an up angle directly towards the driver. Let me go around the side here. Get my feet out of the way. So this really worked out pretty well, I think, on the front. I don't bang into everything. Very cool. Now, think about the back ones. You can see, even though we, you know, the mount is a nice mount and it mounts the speaker quite well, you can see that the angle there, right, is kind of pointing back at the other speaker. And I'm going to go over here and take a little angle off this camera. All right, so instead of like this, I would like to see this bracket because it, it really has, I don't have it real tight, but it doesn't have an ability to rotate, right? Because the screws are in a lateral horizontal type position. They're going this way. There's no way to make this go another direction. I'd like to see some adjustability in this, some way to maybe get the speaker to go like that, right? Because now, is pointing back to the driver where the head is. And that's how I have them mounted on my P1 rig. And it works really well because it's pointed right up at my, at my head and I can actually hear the rear left and right channels much better, obviously, than if they were pointing that way. I would still hear them, but because they're shooting off that direction towards the pedals, yeah. I mean, it looks good, but I think it'd be more effective if we could do something like this, right? Anyway, that's just my opinion. And because in real life, when I'm, when I'm using my other rig, that's the way I have them, and it really works well. So other than that, I really like these mounts. They really are solid pieces and easy to mount your Logitech speakers to. And that's what they were designed for. If you go to their website, you can see that they're actually using these Logitech speakers. Right. So that was the last thing that we're going to be looking at as far as building this rig. We've got the shifters on, and you can see we now have a wheel on. We've got our Midge 20 OSW SemiCube 1 that we're going to be using. We've got our HPP pedals on. And I'm going to be taking these pedals, the angle, because of the angle they're at now, and we discussed this earlier in the pedal mounting segment. Yeah, the 
I think I'm going to lay them flat after I drive with them in this position. And we're going to obviously see them flexing a bit and see how much flex there is once I have them all the way down flat and see if that cures it or not. So something we'll be experimenting with when we start driving the rig. And yeah, the seat's good. The seat's actually pretty comfortable. It's very dense foam on there on the back and the bottom. So, you know, different people are going to like different densities, obviously. I think it's okay, but you will, I won't really know until I've been in there driving for a while. But other than that, we're ready to drop these monitors down because they're too high. I'm going to have to drop these down so that they get low enough that it'll be nice for this setup. Right. So we're all set up. Now what we're going to do is wire everything up. And when we come back, we're going to be driving. So now for the pedal tray test in the cockpit. And you guys can see I got a little bit of flex here with these heavy HPP pedals and the 8020 profile that it is mounted to, and then that's mounted to the tray, you can see we do have some movement, and I do have a slight incline to get the pedals at the right position for me. And this is not too surprising. This is the latest version or design of the pedal tray that Track Racer offers, and it has a lot of reinforcement tubes in it. But still, what really the issue here is, I think, is they need something out on the end of this tray maybe mounted to that to the frame part that the pipe that goes around the front of it so that we can support that somehow and then that would be non-existent i believe and it's not too bothersome but again that's what we do with the srg we try to show you everything and i even changed the angle you see here i actually changed the angle down flat so there was no more incline in the pedal tray assembly and we still have movement maybe not quite as much I don't know, it depends on what you guys, you know, I'll let you make up your own mind there. It might be the same, it might be a little less, but it's still there. Again, not so much that it's, you know, caused me to miss shifts or I was not able to brake consistently or anything like that. But I do like to show these things. As you guys know, when we put things through the SRG review process, we like to push them very hard just to see what the limits are. And I think we, we know what the limits are here. They, again, I'd like to see some kind of brace on the end of this pedal tray. But yeah, other than that, yeah, everything's fine here as far as this bottom assembly. It's just that, that wiggle in the back of the tray. Now we're moving over to this, to the Monster 20 Newton meter small midge motor that we have mounted to the frame. And if you watch this closely, you do see some movement, but it's mostly the, the arms are moving a lot also that they're coming that are part of the frame it's not so much the wheel base assembly itself which has a lot of bolts in there that you can really cinch down tight it's like the whole thing is moving and that's because we have so much weight of course on the end of this frame or this part of the frame is it it connects down at the bottom and then curves all the way up and brings the wheel base plate up to us so i was not as surprised at all to see this really you know I can, there's other cockpits that would suffer even worse than this one. So this being as stiff as it is really performed better than I thought it would. But again, just another stress test here. And after we finish beating that part up, we decided to go ahead and put the TSPC back on or on for the first time, actually, and running the same exact piece of the track here, as you can see. And yeah, there's going to be a lot. If, you, if there's any movement at all, you might be able to detect a little bit, but it's you, you can't detect it in the wheel system when you're using it. It's just, it feels rock solid with this Thrustmaster mounted to it. And I also mounted a Club Sport uh, 2.5 to it. Same thing, same results. And I kind of expected that because this is, this is within, I think, the nominal parameters that they designed this cockpit for. And they do have an 80-20 profile cockpit, a new one actually, that they designed to handle the heavier direct drive equipment and be able to make that a solid mount. Haven't tried one of those yet, but uh, there are pictures on their site of, of it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be better than this because everything's suspended so far out on this design. But again, if you're using the normal kind of wheels that most guys are gonna be using and pedal sets for that matter, you won't be seeing the kind of flex that you saw here. But that's just the result of us pushing things and you know how we love doing that. So overall, I think this is a, a decent cockpit actually, once it's all put together, it's very stiff and the ergonomics really shine here for me personally. I don't know if you know everybody will think the same thing, but I think it's a combination of the one piece shell seat that we get and mounted to the very solid frame and the ergonomics are very good because the seat brackets that are on the side of this seat allow you to drop this seat pretty low and get the right incline, at least for me, to make it a very comfortable seat. And I'm low enough 
where the where my bum when it's sitting in the seat and compressing the cushion in the seat is on the same plane almost the same plane as the, my heels are on sitting on the heel plate on the pedals and that's where i have them on my p1 I'm, I'm perfectly level there i'm exactly on the same plane which makes it very comfortable but this was close like i said i may have said this before maybe another whole set of holes on their seat brackets lower and yeah it would have been there i think but this is close enough to where i didn't have any discomfort at all and that's one of the things that a lot of people overlook when they're looking at cockpits especially the prefab type of cockpits like this one that yeah ergonomics is important you want to be sitting in the seat trying to drive the, uh, a car hard sitting like you're driving in a regular car that you drive every day or you know some people call it the truck driver position <laughs> so yeah it all if there's any way you can raise your pedals up and, and get more of an even plane there between your bum and your heels yeah do it because it really makes a big difference i think everybody has responded well to that when i've you know set that up for them right so i guess that's about it as far as driving the cockpit again i think overall it's a very solid design and as long as you're not mounting 30 newton meter midge motors on the, the motor mount it does fine and i would still like to see some kind of a mount system on the edge of uh, the back edge rather of that pedal tray just a couple of bolts or something would you know i'm sure that track racer could come up with something pretty simple that would eliminate that the flex at the very end there because there's really nothing supporting it there just kind of floating out in the air at that point right so yeah i think that's it what we'll do next is get on to the final thoughts Final thoughts on the TR8 cockpit from the guys at Track Racer. First off, I have to say this is pretty much the stiffest prefabricated type of cockpit I've had in the SRG to date. It's quite clear that this is the result of the Track Racer team concentrating on the connecting points of the cockpit's main frame pieces, with no less than 10 M8 bolts securing the two bottom frames an 8 M8 bolt securing the upper wheelbase frame, well, I think it's easy to see where the stiffness comes from. And using 2mm by 50mm tubing throughout the TR8's design. Also, from using welded gussets on the inner radiuses where these tubes have bends in them, keeps them, the flex in those areas really at a minimum. Where other cockpits have a single side on as far as where their metal connections are welded, the TR8 has welds on both sides, again, contributing to this solid result. It's the little things that matter sometimes. I had two different shifter mounts in this review, the smaller one that comes with the kit and the larger one that is available as an accessory. Both are sporting the same tubes as the frame and have proper welds throughout. Here again, once properly cinched down, one of the stiffest that I've had in the SRG for a prefab type of cockpit. Now there is some movement, but really 
not enough to, to be a bother, I think. The pedal tray has plenty of adjustment range built in. The fact that it uses a series of drilled holes instead of a long slot in its adjustment feature is a very welcome sight. <laughs> I was able to mount all the pedals on hand here at the SRG, including offerings from Logitech, Thrustmaster, Fanatic, and my HPPs. However, all is not perfect here, as there is some noticeable flex in the pedal tray when driving in an aggressive manner, <laughs> mostly under braking. I would like to see, well, some sort of a bracing solution implemented in the back of the tray to bring this flex under control. Now onto the wheelbase support and mount system. Again, here you can tell the focus of attention was on minimizing flex. The wheelbase mount itself is a very solid unit with no less than eight M8 bolts to secure it to the 50 millimeter tube. The mounting plate was also very solid with an adjustment range, well, I think for most to be able to dial in their preferred reach or wheel angle. Of course, when a product is put through the SRG's review process, it will be pushed hard to test its limits. And this review is no exception. <laughs> I decided to mount one of my heaviest DD wheelbase solutions to see how the TR8 handled it. A MIG-20 motor with a Q1R quick release connecting my USB modded Fanatic F1 wheel. Now, this package weighed in at over 28 and a half pounds, or around 13 kilos. When driving with this monster mounted, I did get some flex in the wheelbase mount frame, but not in the wheelbase mount itself. To be honest, I was not surprised by the result I was getting when you consider how far away from the connection point this heavy weight was suspended. It included a bit of spring effect during the heavy force feedback hits and not really distracting enough to impact my driving really but not an optimal environment to provide the driver with the finer details a dd wheelbase can deliver now to be fair here you know i can't find any mention on the tr8's compatibility with dd wheel systems and when i did use my tspc racer and club sport 2.5 wheelbases i did not notice any flex when driving those systems at the limits of their force feedback power capabilities. Another high note here is the TR8's ergonomics. The seat that you can get with this cockpit is better than I expected. A one-piece fiberglass shell with thick, dense foam in all the right places provided a good, comfortable result once my driving position was dialed in without having to mod anything. I was able to get quite close to my preferred driving position I use in my SimLabs P1 cockpit. And if the seat brackets had holes that went, you know, another inch or so lower, I think I would have been there. This is as far as I can remember the most comfortable out-of-the-box cockpit I've ever tested here at the SRG. Now, the speaker mounts available for the TR8 are a solid solution. With the only minor gripe here, of not being able to change the angle of the rear speakers to a more direct path to the driver's ears. Now the keyboard tray did have an issue of getting its clamp tight on the 50 millimeter tubing when I was mounting it and where I mounted it, but I was able to shim it a bit to get things more stable. Now <laughs> I'm sure that there are those out there who really like the double deck style of this keyboard accessory, but Personally, I would rather see a mouse area located on the same plane as the tray. This would give us more clearance when having to run a wheelbase at lower angles and larger wheels, of course. Overall, I like what the guys at Track Racer have come up with here in the TR8 cockpit. There is room for improvement, of course, but that is true with any prefab type of cockpit I've tested to date. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.